Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here and for people who joined on the live stream. We're really pleased uh, this afternoon to be hosting Kayane, uh, a wonderful speaker that will be presented to us by Isabelle Leung, who is the uh, Directrice de la Communication, Communications Director for Google France. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everyone, for being here and online. Uh, we are very, on behalf of the Asian Google Network, we are very honored to welcome Kayane today for the first time since the pandemic uh, in our offices in Google uh, Paris uh, to have this talk. And um, we are very honored because you are a world champion in esports. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here too. Thank you very much for the invitation. So um, I, won't, I, won't, I won't introduce yourself. I mean, your profile, I mean, there's so many things to say. Maybe to, just to start, you were a France champion when you were nine years old. Yes. You, you got into the Guinness Records book very, very, um, very it's soon after. 10 years, 10 yeah. years ago, I... I had a record on the Guinness uh, World Records, yeah. and today I have 67 podiums and 15 victories, first place at yeah, tournaments, and it's mixed tournaments, so I play against uh, male players, uh, female players, so I play against everybody, it's, just, it's not just females. And it's across the world, why? It's across yeah. the world, of course. I, <laughs> I traveled uh, since I was uh, 18 years old. I traveled to mainly US, uh, many countries in Europe, and Japan. Okay. So my first, my first question, my, the number one question that comes into mind when we see your profile and your experience, how did you do this? Like, really, like concretely, how did that happen? I didn't really think that I would be a professional player. It just happened that I love to play and I just wanted to uh, be passionate about it and, and meet another, other players to share the passion with me. And so it happened that uh, at first, players were not really welcome. <laughs> welcome. They didn't really welcome me at first because they thought, oh, it's a little girl. It's, she's only nine years old. She's a baby. What, what is she doing here? She doesn't have her place here. And I wanted to show the world that uh, even female players, even children have their place in this fighting games world. So I wanted to prove and I Prove it quite <laughs> young because at nine years old I became vice champion in France, uh, and then my brothers told me to continue to play and train and uh, meet other players and maybe someday travel in Japan to play the best in the world or maybe even US for Evo, the biggest uh, tournament in the world in Las Vegas, and then I just train and <laughs> with my brothers uh, participated to many tournaments in France and uh, got a lot of uh, titles in France. And so I participated to my first tournament at 18, 19, and I became a world champion when I was 19. Wow. Maybe, actually, we, we are going to see some images of uh, Kayane's fights uh, in Street Fighter or other, other games. And uh, maybe a few words about eSport. What, what is eSport? It's something that m not many people know. I recall on my hand the um, League of Legends 2019 that mm. took place with 100 million unique viewers at once. Yeah. And this is something that we don't realize the extent of this industry. Yes, it, it evolves so much. And uh, every year it, it happens that uh, crazy things happen that I couldn't you know, think about uh, years ago. And uh, I've been here for 20 years now, and I see many different kind of um, evolutions in terms of social networks, in terms of uh, new medias. Uh, when I started, there was no YouTube, no Twitch, uh, no Twitter, <laughs> no Facebook, nothing. So when we, we played, we just played, and uh, only the people that was, were here could watch the matches. And uh, when we saw incredible matches, we just talk on forums. 
at first we we just talk uh, on internet but uh, it was uh, all msn and things like this <laughs> but uh, nothing to share the contents so it was quite weird to see the evolution when uh, we started to share on youtube all the videos from tournaments and when i see that today it's even more about esportainment. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, it's not only esport, it's not the performance only, it's also the influence uh, that uh, the personalities have that is important. And uh, now the sponsor, they don't want just you to be a player, they want you to share content, to be a creator, to share in all social networks that exist, and to be everywhere. And uh, now when we see the incredible amount of viewers on Twitch, they're not only here for the players, they're also here to see influencers, to do esports. And that's how uh, the amount of viewers in, in these platforms has increased a lot because it's not only the competition, it's the fun mm. and uh, that changed everything since like two years ago. I okay. Think. So you mentioned that it was tough in the first place, obviously. Um, how can you describe that? And do you think your culture and your background actually helped you in a way? Uh, I come from a family that is Vietnamese and Laotian. And uh, my parents, they always told me to not only focus on video games. Well, I think they preferred me to be more <laughs> in something that is... Uh, how can I say it? <laughs> mm, more noble than yeah. video games. The video game is like, oh, you have fun, but you're not going to do anything with that in your life. Uh, it's just uh, lost time. <laughs> you just have fun with that. Okay, it's fun, but uh, hey, uh, you, you need to study. You need to do something with your life and not just play. And uh, <laughs> I was saying my parents that I would love to, to work in video games and my my dad always said, no, never think that you will leave from video games. It's a passion and a hobby, but that's it. You, you can't leave from it. And then I, because he told me that very, at a young age, uh, because my brothers, they play long enough before me, but this, they became engineer and I was the smallest in the family. And they say that, uh, oh, no, you don't do video games, please. <laughs> and because I thought this way too, uh, I thought that, yeah, I, sh I should not be in video games, just a passion. I think that every time I had an opportunity to do something in this uh, world, I was uh, always thinking, okay, it's great, but I have to keep in my mind that uh, I'm very lucky if I live something in the video game world, but I should not be too excited. <laughs> And the fact that I'm not too excited, uh, it's, I think, uh, makes me um, be realistic. I, I mean that the world is uh, increasing and evolving so much that uh, maybe I'm famous at this time and the next year I will be nobody. <laughs> so the fact that my father told me long enough uh, at a very young age that uh, Video games is fine, but you know you don't know what how the world will evolve, and you don't know if it will be your job if, all the time. Uh, it means a lot to me uh, because uh, he didn't really trust it, and so in my mind I am like, okay, I, <laughs> I'm, I can be I can be someone today, but tomorrow I can be nobody. So <laughs> I'm really humble about this. That's one of the questions I have actually, because living as a professional player, what does it mean concretely like on a daily basis? Is it like a lot of um, practice for you, like mm -hmm. hours practicing? You have to keep fit also because it's very physical in a way. So how, how do you, and, and so that's my first part of the question. And second part is what's next for you? How do you see it? Mm. Uh, being a professional player, it means to have a lot of training, of course. When we have a new fighting game that comes out, uh, we have to choose a character, um, train a lot with it, and, uh, and know the matchups. So it means you know all the other characters. It means that um, you have to play your character against 
all of, uh, of your characters. And so you have to, to train how to fight against them. You have to learn all the moves, how to counter all the moves. And uh, once you know that, then you have the same level of uh, knowledge than the other competitive players, because we are all supposed to know the games, but the, all the game by heart. And then what uh, comes in tournaments when you travel in another country after 12 hours of flight, maybe $5,000 to just get to Vegas, <laughs> you know, it's very expensive to pay, the, to pay the plane ticket, to pay the hotels, the food, all ex it's all expensive there. And you spend all that and then you're here in the tournament, you can't play casuals, you can't play um, some games before to warm up, you know? So you're like, here, okay, I have my opponent just right to me. He's here and uh, he really wants to beat me. <laughs> and I really want to beat him too. <laughs> and uh, we know that uh, to come here, we come from a long way mm -hmm. and uh, we don't want to lose here. So we have to be prepared really mentally to uh, just fight and give everything in five minutes. <laughs> and if you lose in this five minutes, uh, you go in loser bracket. So it means that you have two lives when you play. So first you're in the winner bracket. And uh, if you lose, you go to the loser bracket where, where everybody lost once. And then if you lose again, then it's all over. You go back to France, you cry. <laughs> and that's, that's it. Well, it's, um, it's kind of tough because uh, you can make a long trip and get ready for one week to be here in advance to, 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 don't ha to not have a jet lag mm -hmm. because it's nine hours from France to Vegas at, uh, in the summer. So it's quite hard, and sometimes I just have a headset and I focus on my music, and <laughs> I try to be in my own world to uh, focus on the match and my opponent. But yeah, it's uh, very mental, and people don't really realize that. But uh, yeah, when you know a game, then uh, the, the difference is the human behind the, the controller. And, um, and how you adapt to your opponent and how you anticipate him and also show the confidence that you may have more than him. It's all important. And uh, I know that Americans, they are very, very, they are really showing that uh, they trust in themselves and uh, <laughs> the rest of the world are like a bit uh, oh, a bit modest. <laughs> so we, we, we have to to show that uh, we are stronger than the opponent. And it's not only the game, it's also the person, the human that is playing. And actually, as a woman, because, I mean, it's common sense. I mean, it's very common to, to know that the esports and the gaming industry is a very male-dominated environment. So as a woman, how did you do that? And did you face any bias in the industry or in the games when you, when you turn up and you were a woman and very young? Uh, since I started in a very young age, uh, first people say, uh, you're a female player, you should not be here, you know, you should play with dolls, <laughs> things like this. Uh, you should not be in this uh, male-dominated world. And um, when I continued, then I had a community that was behind me and considered me like a little sister, which is... Uh, really cool but then I started to grow up and be more feminine be more uh, lady <laughs> and then people started to say hey we can hang out together and I'm like no I just want to play <laughs> and then you, you can make some players be frustrated because you don't have the same um, you, you don't want to hang out with them, you don't want to date with them, you just want to play. And sometimes they get frustrated and they get mean. And they, they say, oh, she, she doesn't um, deserve to be here in the community. But they won't say that it's because I say no. <laughs> so they are just like that here uh, being cruel. And they won't say the real reasons. And that's how it's difficult sometimes because uh, uh, sometimes they just want to go out of you and you say just no, and they can be very 
uh, they can lead people to be against you just for that. And that's something that was quite difficult when I was around 16 years old and uh, even yeah, older. But it's things have changed because uh, I, I made people respect me more. But it's always something like this when you go to a tournament um, or when you play on stream and people see you, they, they will ask questions like, why is she here? Why? Eh, why don't you ask that about any guy <laughs> that is here playing, you know? They just ask this question when it's a woman and it's... Um, uh, really frustrating for me because people would say uh, she's not legitimate in this world but guys they don't have to show that they are legitimate in this world too uh, you, if you want to play you just play and you don't have to ask why we are here and uh, that's something that uh, really makes me mad <laughs> when I read it when uh, a woman uh, play on stream or that she's here people would say things like that and uh, no, we don't have to prove all the time that we deserve to be here, you know. We we come from the passion and we just want to play. We just want to improve just like you guys. And uh, by playing, I want, to, I want to prove them too that female players are just as good as them. Uh, but to be considered the same, it's, uh, it's still a long way. Do you see it evolving though? You think, you think there is progress? In the for gaming me, industry, uh, yeah. for me, I, I feel like I don't have to prove it anymore because people know me for a very long time. It's been 20 years. And I feel like now that I'm a bit more than 30 years old, people are like, oh, she's like, she's like a mama of a fighting game. <laughs> so they're like, oh, yeah, she's here for so, so much time. Uh, I feel really respected in France. Um, but uh, sometimes when there's a new female player, uh, not only on fighting games, but uh, in other communities, uh, they will still have to fight to be respected. And I feel like it's uh, in fighting games, we are more welcome, maybe because I also uh, show the example. But in other games, I feel like it's still very difficult to be accepted, to be um, considered as, as a player. And uh, that really makes me um, sad because uh, I've been here for 20 years and I see the other communities like uh, Counter-Strike, uh, League of Legends and other games. And I don't really see the evolution mm. uh, when it comes to people considering the female players. Yeah. But I see more uh, female that have um, a great job in uh, the industry, like being an analyst, being a caster, being an organizer. I, we see more and more females evolving in this kind of jobs, uh, which is really great because yeah. before it was only guys. Uh, now it's really changing. But uh, for the viewers to still respect the female players, it's still a long way. And is it for you an opportunity to become a mentor for those young ladies who want to be fighters or players? Uh, I, when uh, they ask me about uh, some advice, I always reply. I didn't think of being a manager or something like this for them especially. especially. Uh, but uh, uh, I feel like maybe it's something to do, to, uh, do I don't know, make a group uh, where they would feel safe to talk and uh, maybe be being between girls that uh, have difficulties in this world and uh, share uh, their experiences. Maybe it would be nice to do, especially with me because I've been here for a long time and I, I know how to make, to make people feel that they are safe with me. Uh, so maybe it's something that I should do. Uh, I al always have a lot of projects and uh, I feel like it's something that um, should be made, especially with, uh, with uh, female players and other girls that are working in this industry. I, I see many, um, many things on Twitter where they would share uh, how they feel in the world, in this world, and I, and I read it, I'm like, wow, I didn't know about this. And maybe we, if we had the occasion, the opportunity to talk about it earlier, uh, we could have avoided a lot of bad situations uh, right. if we could react 
uh, before that bad things happened, you know. So um, oh, I, I really think that uh, I should do something more about this, yes. One of your activities is actually to help charities and NGOs. Can you talk uh, talk us more about it? Like, what kind of uh, opportunities do you um, do you grab helping them uh, within? I think it's within other players too. It's on your own. And which causes do you um, do mm -hmm. you commit to? Uh, so it's quite funny because when uh, when you are a player or any talent, <laughs> you share about what you like, about what you eat, drink, and have in your life. And uh, I shared a lot about my dog. <laughs> I shared a lot about my, my Akita. So she's uh, really cute. And uh, I share a lot of pictures and uh, videos of her. And it's kind of funny because I just shared my life with her and uh, I was contacted by uh, something called 30 million uh, friends. <laughs> I don't know how it could be called in English. 30 million d'amis. Oui, yeah, it's, it's a big French, uh, it's French, oh, it's international. French. Uh, NGO French. protecting uh, animals. Yeah. Yes, so uh, it's a French TV show at first yeah. that doesn't exist anymore as a show on TV, yeah. but uh, they still fight against uh, all animals' cruelty, and they, they do a lot of things, and they want to be more on uh, socials, and to work more with talents and video games, so they really wanted to, uh, to uh, focus on having ambassadors, and uh, they, they talked of me because I <laughs> showed a lot of pictures of my dog. And so that's something it, I didn't really think about, but because I talked a lot about animals and dogs and uh, cute, <laughs> cute creatures that make us happy, uh, they, I, I started since uh, last year to work with them. And uh, so we organized streams to, um, to do charity for animals and for... Um, uh, to, to get money to, to help them. And uh, I also worked with uh, Play International, which is an um, NGO that um, works uh, with uh, Africa to help children to, be more, to have more good education through the sport. And that's really cool because I also practice uh, sports in, by my side with uh, Muay Thai. So it's a uh, Thailand is boxing <laughs> and uh, I was really, really um, happy to work with Play International because they have a lot of uh, champions, Olympic champions that uh, came to the stream, that came to help uh, the charity cause. And it was really cool because uh, we, I come from uh, video games, from fighting games, and I do eSports. And then I, I could meet these champions that are Olympic. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, things in common through the, the training, to uh, the, the trips, and uh, how, we, how we deal with pressure, and uh, how we deal with uh, other people, opponents in France. And we have a lot of things in common and that was very interesting to not uh, share that with them and and so we we wanted to to do more for countries in uh, Africa and that's how I I worked with uh, Play International and before working with them I also went to uh, Senegal mm -hmm. and uh, they opened their first uh, esports club and I, I was there to open it. And it was really cool because thanks to fighting games, you know, people gather to, together, they play, they share good, great moments. And uh, in France, we have a lot of things to share with them. And uh, we, we want to help them to evolve the scene ev even more. So that's how I work sometimes with uh, NGO. Thank you. Um, we just very recently, we, we had a talk with a fellow researcher, a French lady, and we talked about increasing racism, discrimination against the Asian community. And that really was happening during the pandemic because of the Chinese virus or the yellow alert in some titles in the uh, headlines in the in newspapers is it something that you've you've witnessed in your in your environment something that you saw and uh, how did you deal with it 
Uh, so I I live in a in a city where every time I go out, yeah, sometimes people would always say things about the fact I am Asian. And uh, during the pandemic, it was yeah, it was quite something <laughs> because uh, when you had some shops open and you go in a shop and you're Asian and people would like uh, they they would uh, avoid you. And they would say, oh, things like this, just because you're Asian and, <laughs> and next to them, you go to, uh, to get some perfume and you, you do your spray and they're like, oh, no, I don't want you to be sprayed by the same thing, you know, but you're like, what? <laughs> it's at this point and I, wow. And sometimes, yeah, they, you know, you ha I have my dog, and when I, I walk out with her, and people would say, oh, no, you both have uh, the virus. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> because my, my, my dog, uh, yeah, she, she's a Japanese dog. So she even look Asian, you know, because of her eyes. <laughs> so, <laughs> people would say, oh, she's a Chinese dog. And, <laughs> and she has a coronavirus. And so, no, <laughs> not dogs, please. <laughs> me, okay? You can say things about me. I can't reply, but not my dog, please. <laughs> she doesn't even understand what you're saying. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it, sometimes uh, there are some things like this, yeah. Yeah. And uh, people could be really rude uh, to me. Even wh when I walk my dog, they were like, oh, you're going to eat her. And I'm like, what? did I hear well? Because <laughs> I'm, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes I practice boxing. I'm like, oh, they deserve to be in the <laughs> same curse than me. <laughs> and yeah, and be my punching ball. Sometimes I, I think <laughs> about this wow. when I have to face people like that. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, quite crazy when uh, I a lot of sometimes. ignorance, probably. Yeah, yeah it's quite uh, things that I I had recently. But uh, since I was a teenager, it was always something that because I was only one of the only Asian in my class and uh, in my school, they would always be quite mean because I'm Asian. And um, you know, it's a uh, it's hard when you're. you're a child because child are always so mean each other and uh, sometimes you just feel like oh it's because i'm asian i have all this criticism uh, but later you're like oh i'm so proud to be asian <laughs> but when you're a child and uh, because of of your child that uh, are so mean to you you're like oh i'm not proud of what of who i am i don't want I don't know what I want to be. I don't know. I don't know what I am. And uh, later, when you grow up, and uh, you also uh, realize more uh, what your parents came through, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I'm so proud of my family, of my parents, of my origins, of their origins. Uh, and uh, that's when you grow up, that you realize all the sacrifices and that you love more your origins, your uh, countries. And uh, now I'm really proud to be Asian. Yes. Good. <laughs> I see the time. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll ask in the room, uh, before to look at the Dory, in the room, anyone has a question, uh, wants to ask a question to KNA? There is a mic. Guillaume. Guillaume is... Um, Guillaume Hello. is my partner at <laughs> AGN, and it's actually Hello. thanks to Guillaume that we have KNA on stage today. Yeah, it was, yes. a, it was a team effort, so congratulations to everyone involved, and uh, thank you very much, KNA, for, for being here today. Uh, it's uh, really inspiring uh, and fun, too. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I wonder if we could have like punching balls sometimes, you know, around. It would be helping us feeling better. Now, I just have a, maybe a kind of a, a personal question, but I... I know that, uh, I mean, you touched on, on families, and um, I, I think you have, uh, I think you, you, you're not a single child, right? You have uh, brothers, right? I have two brothers, yes. Okay. And, and my question was, uh, so what do they do in, uh, in life? So actually, because my, my family comes from other countries like Vietnam and Laos, when we came to France, uh, when they come to France, they met in France, they married in France, and they wanted the children to be really integrated in France. And so they, they put a lot of pressure in my older, oldest brother 
he has uh, 11 years older than me, so uh, he's way older, and uh, he had all the pressure, and my parents say, oh, you have to be good at maths. <laughs> to be good at maths, it doesn't matter that you're good in English, it's maths. And, uh, and uh, my other brother, who, who is uh, seven years old, uh, older than me, uh, he, he had the same speech from my dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they both became uh, engineer in uh, softwares. And uh, me, I was the last one and uh, the only daughter. So I was quite lucky because my dad didn't really know how to react to me. I was bad at mathematics. <laughs> but my brothers were very good at that. So I'm like, oh, okay, it's for my brothers. Me, I prefer to study English, to study history and um, Japanese. And my dad is like, it won't serve you in your life to be good at that. You won't be rich. You won't, <laughs> you won't have a good job. Uh, you, you won't work in uh, famous companies if you're not good at mathematics. And I'm like, oh, I do whatever. So he had to deal with, with me. But because I was the last one, I think it really helped me. Because uh, I think the last one in the family have, has more, less pressure. Maybe can do... If the brothers and sisters succeed, <laughs> the last one can do uh, something that pleases him, her more. So I think I was lucky enough because when I said to my parents that I finally want to be in video games and that they won't make ch my mind change, my dad said, um, I really don't believe that you will leave from video games. Uh, I still don't think it's an uh, industry. But me, because I, I see the things evolving, I was really convinced. But he told me, OK, I don't trust your project. But you know, you still have your bedroom in the house. <laughs> so if you, if you fail, uh, you can still come back to home. <laughs> so I, I think it was quite cute. And in the same time, it was, it was cruel to not believe in me. <laughs> but it's OK. I, I take it. <laughs> Sometimes you have some family that won't support their children. But me, I had a family that will welcome and support me if I fail. And I think it was more important that him believing in video games. So that's, <laughs> that's how I took it. And no, I never came back home. <laughs> so I think I was quite suc successful in video games to, to prove him now that I, I live from my passion. Thanks. And so would you say that now he's a... Uh just as proud of you as he's proud of, uh, of uh, your brothers. And, and, and if so, what did you do to make him so proud? Like, uh, like invite him to a restaurant or? Oh, yes, I do that. <laughs> so my dad is like, uh, he, he loves taking pictures and videos in restaurants, in the chic restaurants. And tell to all his friends that, uh, <laughs> oh, he, his daughter invite him. So it's quite cool. <laughs> and um, since I was a child, uh, when I was 12 years old, I, um, um, I had some trouble at school. So in public schools, I, I had trouble with other children. And um, they moved me to a private uh, uh, school so that I would be in a more uh, safe place and uh, they, they had to pay every month uh, a good amount of money and uh, I could uh, I could hear my parents argue about this when I was a child and uh, I was 12 and I was like oh I'm so uh, I don't know how to say but it's I feel so useless because I have no money, I have no job, I'm 12 years old, I, I, I can't do anything. And my parents argue because they have to spend money that they don't have to pay my school. Uh, just because I had trouble with other children. <laughs> and uh, it made me feel uh, very, very sad, but also angry. And, but it gave me a lot of, um, you know, I don't know. Um, it gave me a lot of power to succeed in life. 
from video games. I, <laughs> but I, I felt like uh, it's something that I really wanted to, to prove to my parents that I, I can succeed from what I love, but also to prove that I didn't forget what they did for me. And it's something that is very important to me. So now I live really next to them. I, I don't, it doesn't mean that I see them every day, <laughs> but being close to them, it means a lot to me because if they have any problem, I'm really close to help them. And uh, yes, any time that my dad or mom wants to do, have something, now I'm able to give everything. And uh, I think my dad is quite proud because uh, when I see his friends, his friends always say, oh, you have a famous daughter that your dad always say good things about. I'm like, really? He says good things about me? <laughs> and then the, his friends say, yes, he loves you. He always talks about you. I'm like, dad, he always talks about me. <laughs> but he never says that to me. He says that to his friends. And thanks to his friends, I know that he's proud of me, that uh, he's happy, that I'm... Uh, personality in uh, video games because it means that I succeeded in some way. So he never will say that in front of me, but he says, to, he says that to all his friends. So I'm like, okay, so he's proud. And uh, it's funny because he won't say that. And uh, I, s I know sometimes that he looks at my social networks and uh, sometimes like, how do you know about this? <laughs> and, <laughs> and sometimes I post things where I, I hope that my parents won't see it. <laughs> but he says, oh, I saw your last video. You know the stories, the shorts, you know? Yeah. He says, well, now people, they don't make videos like this and make videos like that. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you know that? He says, I, I, saw, your, I saw your stories. And I'm like, will you see my stories? Yeah, he say I, I, I saw what you eat yesterday. <laughs> so he really into it, but he doesn't say it. But it's quite cute when I think about. <laughs> I think we recognize a few, um, a few cultural aspects <laughs> there. <laughs> Mark? Yeah, I have a follow-up question to what Jung was asking you about. Um, I'm curious what message you give parents of young daughters, young women, young girls. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about the importance of, you know, your families and the role of education, mathematics. Mm. And I wondered if you could talk about whether you think your, your gaming has helped or hurt your academics. And when parents ask for your experience and your advice, do you think that a young girl playing esports could help with either self confidence or schoolwork? Mm. You know, it's, it's viewed as a distraction, mm. but is there more to the story than just it's just a game? Yeah, actually, when even if uh, sometimes it's quite, it was difficult to be accepted in a community when I was younger, which was 20 years ago, so things have changed a lot today. Um, it's, it's incredible how uh, video games can gather people together from different, uh, you know, gender, age, um, cultures. So... Being able to play a video game made me travel a lot, made me being interested in languages uh, because I, I met a lot of players that are international, that come from different countries, and I really wanted to communicate with them. So I really had to speak English. And when I went to English lessons at school, I had a real reason to learn. So I was really focused <laughs> when, I, when I listened to my teacher. I was like, oh, I know when to use it, and it's very important when you're learning at school, it's how you're going to use it in your everyday life. And then when I, it, it just comes from video games, you know, you, you just want to share with other players, then you're like, okay, I need to learn more about uh, their cultures, because you don't want to make any mistakes when you talk to them. Uh, you need to learn languages, you need to be open to the world. And uh, it's something that is really important now. It's uh, being open. And when I, when I say to my dad things like this, uh, to learn languages, and he was like, no, it's not going to help you to be good in life. And I'm like, 
I know, I know what I want, and I know that it it will bring me more uh, things about being more human. So, um, what I want to say is that uh, esports and video games that it's something that gather people, and uh, it's a uh, interesting and uh, incredible every time I go to a country. I say to uh, some social networks, I would say. Okay, I'm going to. I'm a fighting games player. I'm going to um, a country like Taiwan, and they would say, they would say, oh, oh, we have Taiwanese player here, and uh, we are going to welcome you. And that's what happened. I went to Hong Kong in Taiwan and Japan in a, in one month, and every country had a community to welcome me and. Uh, it's not just playing. They made me uh, visit all the places. They made me eat the good food. Uh, they made me visit some museums and everything. And I was like, okay, I met new friends actually, thanks to video games. It's, and that's something that is uh, really insane when I think about because uh, it's we we don't have any common points except video games and. Uh, that is what is beautiful with uh, with it. It's uh, is that we can share many things just because we started from video games. So I think it's important to say to the parents that it's not just playing in front of a screen in in our bedroom. When you when you're open to the world like this, uh, when you play a game that uh, has a community like that, you really can. Uh, discover a new type of life and that is really important you have to take it and uh, i say to everybody please go to events because what you see in the, in streams in social networks when people when people can just write what they think or what they they want to be when they they types um, when they type bad things it's not the people that you will meet in real life and all the good experiences I had, it's just because I, I don't pay attention to what people say in social networks. And uh, it's just because I, I go to the events. And I know that a lot of uh, female players, they, they don't want you to go to events because when they, they read the bad things on the internet, they say, oh, the community is the same uh, when I will be there. And it's not at all. So. Really, you have to to go to go to events to realize that, and it sometimes be maybe difficult, especially when you're alone. Uh, but the community there is really different, <laughs> and I really love it. <laughs> Costa, um, thanks a lot for being here. Um, I have two questions for you. So you're a champion in esports, and being a champion needs to for you to train, I guess. Mm. So what's your daily routine? Do you spend lots of hours playing every day? And the second question is about the representation of women in video games, because uh, I'm not a big player, but I've seen in the past uh, that there were quite a lot of stereotypes, even in, in fighting games. Do you think things are evolving in the right way? Mm. Uh, so first, the daily routine uh, is that I wake up quite late. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for me to wake up before 11 a.m. And then I I go out with my dog. And after that, I will train. But first, uh, I often watch two tournaments to, um, so to some YouTube videos that uh, have tournaments that happened the day before in, uh, in another country. So we have tournaments all the time happening and uh, I spend a lot of time watching the videos because uh, all the players in the world have a different type of style when they play and use different characters. And when we watch high level uh, matches, we learn a lot, even more than if we just play casuals with uh, players online. So it's even more interesting to watch than just playing. And uh, I al always have uh, notes so I write notes, that's things I have learned wha by watching videos. And when I play, I try to play against uh, competitive players. And I play online sometimes in ranking matches. Uh, but uh, 
when I really want to train, it's always offline sessions. So I invite players to come to, to my place or in another place. And then we, we train for seven hours, even all night. <laughs> and um, before a big competition, we would do that. We would gather all the time and uh, play and play and play and watch videos. And when we participate to tournaments online or offline, uh, it will spend the whole weekend. And after that, uh, we have to watch the, the tournament matches that we played. It will, doesn't matter if we win or lose, but we have to learn from both. Uh, when we win, we have to know what makes us win. And when we lose, we have to take notes of what happened, why we why have we lost? And uh, that's something that is <laughs> quite hard to lose when to, to to watch when you lose. You're like, no, I know what happened here, and your heart is melting. <laughs> it's crying, but uh, you have to watch it and take notes. And uh, being uh, with other competitive friends, it's good because they would say, oh, you know, this time usually you would not be doing that so why did you do that at this moment and you're like i know <laughs> but it's nice to have some uh, feedbacks from other players and it's important because sometimes you don't realize uh, you don't know the mistakes you have made and friends can be the coach we don't really have coach in fighting games so it's mostly it's your friends that are competitive as well and uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, watching, a lot of uh, playing, and um, to to take notes all the time. And yeah, after that, it's uh, mentally going to do something else, like music or sport, to make you feel good. You don't have to only just play because it doesn't matter if you if you know all the game, all the characters, but when you're in front of another player, you're like shaking. It doesn't make sense to train all the time just the, the game. You have to train your own mental uh, state to be to be in shape when you play against uh, other players. So yeah, so it's a long, long way to be a good player. <laughs> I think we have another question in the room. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing your experience. And you said that you have been traveling for 20 years, that you've been playing for 20 years. And my question is, um, how different is your experience now when you attend an event, for instance, or even 20 years ago, when it comes to being treated as a female player, as a female Asian player? Do you see differences when you go to the US versus France versus Asia? Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, France is different than US or Japan. Um, as a female player, when I'm in France, I'm really safe because people know me for a long time. Uh, when I go to US, uh, it's different because they, they didn't see me grow up. So they didn't have an example, a good example of a woman that um, is always in the finalist and uh, when it happens, you're like, oh, she got lucky. <laughs> and uh, when uh, you have a very strong female player, and y there's one that is uh, very good, and she's uh, a Tekken player. She has won plenty of tournaments and cash prizes. But she says that uh, being the champion as a female is uh, quite hard because it's a uh, not only the fact that they would criticize the fact she's a female, but they will uh, criticize uh, the fact she's black. And I'm like, whoa, in France it won't happen because it's, uh, I I the fighting games community is really diverse. We have a lot of uh, black people, a lot of Asians, and uh, it's just normal, you know, to be uh, black or Asian or whatever. It's uh, your player. And we will never criticize the origin. But in the US, it's a fact. And uh, when I see all the comments that she gets of the hate because she's black, I'm like, wow, I didn't expect this because I don't live that in France. And I don't see any black player facing this, male or female, because we are all from different origins and we have lived like that. And if someone does that, <laughs> then you will you have a lot of players that will uh, take him and talk to him and yeah, 
<laughs> scared him. <laughs> so nobody does that. Uh, but yeah, in US, I was quite shocked to to learn that, and uh, it's really hard to to see the comments she has. And what is even more surprising is that. Uh, you have even famous players and streamers that will be hating on her just because she's black and and always say some racist stuff, even on uh, social networks. And the the audience of these players and uh, streamers uh, saying bad things about her, they will get um, yeah I don't understand why she's here and and they would say a lot of uh, really racist stuff. And now uh, you have uh, the publishers, like uh, for example, Capcom uh, for Street Fighter, that will uh, take responsibility. So when they see that uh, a player would say a racist thing, a sexist, um, and being uh, really uh, misogyne, and they would act. They would say, okay, this guy is banned from all over tournaments. And I think it's a good position because we need a safe place and with social networks, a lot of people would talk and say bad stuff. And uh, when uh, the players travel and go to a tournament, knowing that these guys are here, it doesn't make us safe. So that's how uh, publishers now take responsibility. And, and now I feel like uh, they are doing their job it's better, uh, the people uh, will respect more, and uh, I know that's good. And uh, I know it's different in all countries, and uh, we, we have to adapt when you go to another country, you know, because in US, they were like, uh, blah, 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 a female will never make top eight at EVO. And I made top eight at EVO, so <laughs> they would say, well, yeah, but the game was not as popular. Uh, okay. <laughs> they will always have a reason. So uh doesn't matter to me, but because I'm lucky to not live there, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but here, I really feel safe in France. <laughs> maybe we'll check the dory. To see whether there are questions. No, no question on the Dory. Oh, there's one here. Sorry, go ahead. Hi, it's nice, for, nice to have you here. Um, I in other sports, there are certain types of people who excel at certain sports. If you're tall, you play basketball, or if you're fast, maybe you run races. H how do esports athletes choose their their genre or their type of game, and are there types of athletes that are best suited for certain types of games? I think it depends of um, of your story, of family story, and uh, how you met your friends. Sometimes it's just a, a question of how you discover the game. And uh, for me, it was my brothers that they were Tekken champions. So another fighting game. They played a lot together and they participated to tournaments. They were on the PlayStation magazines, <laughs> the first ones. And um, just because of this, I wanted to share some something with them, to play fighting games, just to spend time with my brother. And when I play myself, I, like, I was like, wow, it's incredible. I press a button and the character is doing a move. <laughs> and uh, because of this, I was like, oh, I want to play this Asian girl that is so cute. And when I will be 16 years old, I want to be like her. And that's what made me love fighting games. Uh, but because I discovered that with my brothers. And I think that if I didn't have my brothers that played the games before, I would not have discovered fighting games. Maybe I would not have discovered video games. Uh, maybe I would have been you know, working with animals or being a pianist. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, it would have changed my whole life. And I feel like it's the same with other players that became professional. Uh, some played Counter-Strike just because they played with friends at school or because they met a friend that said, oh, I have a computer at home. Do you want to play? And they play and they, they realize that uh, they, they're good at it. They have fun with it. And uh, when I meet people from the the industry that are champions in different games, it's always like this. It's a dad that made his son play StarCraft II. And yeah, it, it happens like this. It's uh, quite funny because uh, it really depends on where you live and the environment. And um, I, I 
tried over over kind of games. Uh, I love StarCraft as well, but uh, I feel like it's a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of time, and uh, my preference is fighting games, so I focus on that. Uh, but you, when you play, you feel like you have some uh, accessibility facilities to play a kind of game, and then you focus on that. And even if I love fighting games, a uh, strategy game, I felt like I was more talented to fighting games, and also because my stories with my brothers is. Uh, was focused on this kind of game, so it happened to be to be this. <laughs> thank you. I think we're reaching the time. Um, well, I would say big thank you to Talks at Google to um, to have organized this with uh, AGN. Thank you to the AGN group who's here, and thank you Kayane for coming uh, to discuss with us. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you everyone <laughs> for being and you're here. Come to come back. I have to. I have to. Thank you so much. <laughs>